Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at the Asus E403NA. This is a $400 laptop and it's running with an Intel quad-core N4200 processor. This is the new Apollo Lake architecture. We're going to be seeing this on a lot of low-end laptops. And in fact, we looked at a low-end laptop with the same general architecture about a week or so ago from Acer that was about $200. So we'll see if the uh, added double price premium here almost is going to get you more computer here in this review. Now, I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. All right, so let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This has a 14 inch 1080p display. It is a TN display as you can see here. So you do lose some uh, viewing angles when you go off center, but it's not as bad as uh, some of the other cheaper laptops I have looked at lately. So as TN displays go, it's not bad, uh, but of course not as good as an IPS display that we've seen on other laptops sometimes that come in around this price point. And I think we've got one coming in very shortly that uh, has a nicer display. It does have aluminum on a good chunk of the laptop here. So the keyboard deck here is aluminum. Uh, as is the top of the display here, but uh, the bottom portion is plastic along with the sides on it, but generally it feels like a pretty decently built little laptop here. It weighs about 3.3 pounds or 1.4 kilograms. Inside it has a quad-core N4200 processor that is the Apollo Lake architecture, the newer architecture from Intel. It actually performs very nicely as you'll see in a few tests coming up. 4 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. I believe it is in single channel configuration, so that might impact some of its graphical performance. 128 gigabytes of eMMC storage. So it's nice to see that it does have a little more storage than the $200 laptops do, but it's a little slower being that it is eMMC and not a true SSD. Let's take a look at some of the ports on this one. You've got an HDMI output over here, USB 3. You have a USB type C port here. This is not a Thunderbolt port, but it does do display port out. So you get video and data out of here, but you do not get power going in. So if you have a dock with a single cable solution, you will still need to plug in its power cord here to be able to use the laptop, at least without using your battery. Headphone microphone jack is over here. And on the other side here, there is a full-size SD card slot. Unfortunately, it sticks out when you do put the card in here, so you will have to uh, take the card out before you move around with it. USB 2.0 port here, which is a little slower than what you'll get on the uh, USB 3 ports on the other side. And you've got a Kensington lock over here for locking it down on the desk. The keyboard is pretty decent on this one. Nice travel to it. It is not backlit, but it does seem to be a, a nice size keyboard, decently spaced keys here. I've been typing very well on it. I'm also pretty fond of the trackpad here. It does feel a little nicer than some of the trackpads we see on uh, less expensive laptops. It is a click pad, but it does seem to be working quite well. And uh, what's nice also is that there's an integrated fingerprint reader here, so you can unlock your computer very quickly uh, using that via Windows Hello, which is a good thing. My biggest gripe on these Ace Asus laptops, though, is the fact that they tend to slide around on wood desks. And the reason they do is that they put these little pegs here at the bottom. It might be hard to see here. Let me try to get in a little closer there. And what happens with these pegs is that there's no rubber feet on them or anything. So if you've got like a cheap IKEA desk like I do, they do tend to leave some grooves in the wood. And again, it does slide around quite a bit as well. I don't know why they keep building these computers with these little pegs on the side of it, but uh, this is an issue I've seen with these Asus laptops. And it's really a problem, especially if you do have the laptop on a wooden desk, it is going to slide around a little bit more than other brands might that have a rubber foot. Now, Asus is advertising 14 hour battery life on this. We did not get close to that. We ended up around nine or 10 hours uh, using our uh, testing here in the studio, which involves the PC mark, battery benchmark, as well as our uh, general usage of the device. Other reviewers out there have found similar battery life. Nine to 10 hours isn't bad, but it's not 14. I suppose if you really turn down the screen brightness and limit what you're doing with the laptop, you could probably get a little better than we did there, but I would not expect to get 14 hours of battery life under uh, most normal usage. This is a fanless laptop. It does get pretty warm on the bottom here, especially, so uh, be advised it will heat up a bit, but the way these processors deal with heat is that they run slower uh, once things heat up. And we ran a stress test on it a little earlier with 3D Mark. We got a score of 70%, which is a failing grade on that a particular test, but it came in around what we saw on another fanless Apollo Lake laptop from Acer that we looked at two weeks ago. That one also came in around 70% as well. So you will see 
uh, thermal throttling the more that you push this laptop. Let's take a look now, speaking of pushing the laptop, and do some performance benchmarks on this one, and we'll see how it performs. So let's take a look first at some web browsing. We'll pull up my YouTube channel here and run a 1080p video at 60 frames per second. It seems to be uh, running just fine with no drop frames, so that's a good thing. Good web performance out of that for uh, web videos, and Netflix and YouTube should be fine. We also pulled up nasa.gov to do some regular web browsing. Uh, that also seemed to work pretty well. This does have AC wireless built in, so you will get uh, pretty fast uh, wireless connections on it, provided your router is an AC router. So uh, all in a pretty decent web browsing and uh, multimedia device. And on the browserbench.org speedometer test, we got a score of 41.13. That compares to 32.8 that we got on the Acer Aspire 1, which again cost $200 or thereabouts and is running with the N3450 processor, which is a little slower than uh, the Pentium processor on this one. So we're seeing a, a decent little performance boost given that we have a slightly faster processor on here. But to be honest with you, in most uh, everyday kind of interactions with the computer, you may not notice the difference. And it also did fine on our Microsoft Word test. So I don't think you'll have any issues running uh, word processing or spreadsheets or any other kinds of productivity apps on this one. Uh, no issues and pretty nice snappy performance out of it. Now these laptops are not gaming devices, but they tend to run uh, some casual games and some older games quite well. Uh, this one does pretty well. However, we were seeing a lot of those games crashing the more we pushed the laptop. And I think it might be due to the fact that it's not uh, getting rid of that excess heat very well, which could be contributing to some of the issues we had. So not very uh, consistent gaming performance, but when we did run those games and they didn't crash. Uh, we saw some fairly decent frame rates in Minecraft here, as you can see, getting around 30 frames per second or so, sometimes going a little higher, sometimes going a little lower. We did install the OptiFine performance enhancing benchmark on there. I also ran Half-Life 2, uh, which is an older game about 10 or 12 years ago, but it does run very nicely on this hardware. We were seeing frame rates typically above 60 frames per second on it, so it did do very well with Half-Life, but again, we did see a good amount of crashing here and there that required rebooting to get uh, some more stability. So I'm not too confident on this one for gaming. I think you'll probably want to stick to Microsoft Word. And on the 3D Mark CloudGate test, we got a score of 3,789, and that compares pretty favorably to the N3450 powered Acer Aspire 1 that we looked at about a week or so ago. Again, that one costs about $220. So you can see uh, what an extra 200 bucks gets you in performance. Not all that much, but it is a little bit faster, although we did see a better performance difference on that speedometer web browsing test. But again, I'm really concerned about the amount of crashing we saw with this laptop, and I don't think this is a very good solution even for casual gamers. The speakers on this surprise me. They're actually pretty decent speakers for a, a relatively low-cost laptop. Uh, very loud and a uh, good range of sound to it also. They don't sound tinny like I usually experience on these cheap laptops. So I was very pleased uh, with the speaker quality. And one last thing to take a look at, and that is its Kodi performance. We were testing our 140 megabits per second HEVC 4K file. Overkill for this laptop, no question about it. But these new Intel chips do very well with super high-end video. And we did get it to play back that video relatively smoothly. However, uh, the performance here was also not not always that consistent. We did see a bunch of skipped frames sometimes on that file. Other times it ran fine. Uh, that is again overkill for what you might be doing here. So smaller files that are in uh, HD or just DVD format for that matter should do just fine. Blu-ray MKV files that we've played with uh, also were working well on this, but I uh, didn't see the same consistency that I saw out of that N3450 laptop we looked at about two weeks ago that costs less. So all in, I have to say it's an okay laptop. I don't think it's quite worth the $400 price tag given what else we're seeing out there. I do think that Acer Aspire that we saw at $220 is the better laptop of these two, even though it has less storage and isn't as fast. It just seemed to be working more consistently at the things we threw at it uh, versus this one. Uh, so stay tuned. I think we're going to have a few other laptops on the channel soon that might cost around what this one costs or less and might give a little more performance or even better display quality. So at this point, I'm not too crazy about this laptop and have a hard time recommending it to all but the most casual users. And quite honestly, a casual user can get by just fine with a $220 laptop. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, John Prawl, William Miller, 
and Charlie Walden. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.